Mushroom Gourmet Farms, and we are a mushroom farm. Basically what we're doing is, in these two rooms, we're growing on cycles, where one room will fill up, we move into the second room, and then the one room will get stripped down, cleaned up, and we will start over again. So we are week three in this room. There's not too much going on in here. Well, there's a lot going on in here, but not a lot to pick right now. So we have shiitake logs that have been in here for about a week. And I would say by next Wednesday, we'll be harvesting probably upwards of 80 pounds of shiitake from here. Each one of these little like bumps, those are called pins. Those are baby mushrooms. So each one of those is going to become a shiitake mushroom. We have new growth lion's mane up top. That is almost ready to harvest. We could probably harvest it today, but we'll most likely harvest it tomorrow. We have oysters in different like different stages. We've already harvested about 200 pounds of oysters off of these blocks. These are our newer blocks that are now currently pinning. I would say by next week, we will be harvesting all of these oysters. So in about seven or 10 days, we should do a full harvest. And here you see our trumpets. So you have new trumpets. Trumpets have been here for a week and now they're starting to pin. And then we cut a hole in these little bags, let the oxygen mix in, and they start getting bigger. And in a week from this point, they're here. And in a week from that point, we harvest. By next week, everything in this room is gonna be cleared out. We're gonna fresh wash, we're gonna clean it, and we're gonna start over. And we just kinda do this process week after week after week. And usually get about 450 to 500 pounds a week. And are the mushrooms, the process, are they different by mushroom to mushroom? Yes, like each mushroom kind of grows in different temperatures and different like humidity levels, but they have a, a happy spot and we keep it at the happy spot. So the mushrooms are set up on a meter. We don't want to make it too wet in here, but mushrooms need water. That's what, They're just basically filling up with water to eject spores. That's their, their job. I didn't know mushrooms grow that fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, that's wow. why when you're walking in your yard and you, it yes. rains and you see one pop up, yeah. you're like, that wasn't there yesterday. And then the next day, it's like, where is it? Like, yeah, it's, it's why it's so well, magical. It's like, like it's here and gone so quickly. So now this particular room, we've been in this room for about, we're hitting week six. So these guys over here have already produced and we've already gotten a second flush, a second harvest of mushrooms. Most of this stuff we're gonna start moving out towards compost, and then the compost is used on site for flower beds and other things, so it's actually a pretty good deal. These are trumpets that we harvested. We harvested about 95 pounds, and then we have some like yellows that are popping over here. Yeah, so we do this once a week. You want to pick it before they release all their spores because when they release their spores mushrooms lose about 40 percent of their weight and they start essentially deteriorating because they basically lived their life and they did what they're designed to do so we try to get them before they they release their spores and they're at their freshest point and once they're picked we move them into our cooler which is about 35 degrees and you probably have a shelf life of at least a week on some mushrooms so if we go from grow room to cooler and get it out in a matter of days, then our chefs and our clients are gonna get the freshest mushroom possible. But I think mushrooms are gonna save the world one day. Because if you look at these containers, if this was like a, a school bus or like an 18-wheeler trailer, in theory it's movable. So you could set up a small-scale farm in a disaster area, like let's say a hurricane or and a, people. Yeah. And then and have fresh food for people. And Source of protein, iron, yeah, like essential nutrients. And it wouldn't be that hard to keep up as long as you have fresh water and power. So mushrooms can actually take toxins and impurities out of the ground. Like it might work with like radioactive waste, but that's for really smart people. We're just a couple of idiots that like to grow mushrooms. We're trying to feed people and it's actually, yeah, I don't think of anything I'd rather be doing right now. Like I don't see myself sitting in an office. We get to grow things, we get to pick things, and we get to see people be happy with the product that we bring them. Especially like plant-based people, like vegans and vegetarians, we're like a- Filthy vegans. Filthy vegans, we're, we're like a vegan butcher shop. You know, if you don't eat meat, where do you get your protein? Either from fake food or, you know, mushrooms, because mushrooms are a great source of protein. 
So we have a big following in the plant-based world. You don't eat the, the stem on this guy. You yeah. could. It's edible. I eat the stem. I just don't good. eat the bottom of the stem. Yeah. Oh, okay. it's, a, it's a little fibrous. It's a little too much. I kind of like the texture. I use it to make like a vegan like pulled pork. Yeah, you're also vegan and eat sticks. <laughs> Tasty sticks. <laughs> sticks made of mushroom. <laughs> Get between the mushroom and the bag. And then you just push it up. And then you'll all come out. So this feels like it's about a pound. So big. Yeah, it's a pretty big mushroom. Oh, yeah. oh you're getting it. Yeah, you just Oh yeah. Oh wow. It's like a. Oh no. Yeah, man down, man down. So That's fine. It's like a big bug. Yeah, like, <laughs> that, like, <laughs> like a caterpillar. <laughs> Mushrooms don't need light to grow, but they are phototropic. They do grow towards the light. These particular mushrooms are all like decomposers, so they can pretty much grow on anything. Like oyster mushrooms, you can grow probably on cardboard, on newspaper if you wanted to. Lion's mane, they tend to grow in trees if it's struck by lightning, because it's a like, sterilized part of the tree is nutrient, it's uh, nitrogen rich, and they're like, hey, I like it here, we're gonna, we're gonna make our home here. But whenever you see a mushroom out in the wild, that's like nature hitting the lottery, because you have these two little spores they fly and they connect, and when they connect, they start growing this mycelium, this white web, basically what you see here, the whiteness. There, there's the mushrooms that will be the last meal that you had in your life. If you consumed it, you're basically your liver and your kidneys will stop working by the time you're done digesting it, and you'd have a bad life from that point forward, <laughs> if you make it. It's kind of messy in here. We're gonna build a lab out here, but this is our mixer. I would say in another two months, this room will be finished out. That's my office, dirty, gotcha. dirty office. <laughs> office is kind of storage. I mean, I do have to do some some office stuff. I mean, we do have QuickBooks and other Invoice things. We are, we are technically a, a business <laughs> and I have yeah. to like pay taxes and do payroll. So that's done in here, but it's also like our snack drawer and where <laughs> we maybe have a farm beer every now and then. Yeah. You're feeling down if you walk into the goat. There's goats here? Yes. Oh, there's we could go feed oh, the goats. Them. All right, we're gonna get some tortillas. Are we straight up? <laughs> They're Mexican don't need goats. To spray up. They just grow out of like wood, wood chips. Amanitas are a funny group, and it tastes delicious apparently uh, because there's accounts of people finding them and eating them and being like, oh, that was so delicious, and then like two days go by and it's dead. Looks like turkey tail. Oh, there's some uh, cinnabar cantrell. Oh, those cinnabars are really dried up. We got tortillas. Tortillas. Oh, they're like giving up food. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, so if you're ever feeling down, you can come over here and they, calm down. They may have you. begun to associate us with tortillas. <laughs> I, know. I, know. I only got one hand, bro. Baby goat. Baby, Baby goat. These guys are, I call them the beagle dog looking twins. Like, <laughs> they both look like beagles. <laughs> <laughs> the big one's really aggressive. Oh, this one. The, yeah. yeah, he'll get in there. <laughs> Oh! Ooh, that's a little aggressive, buddy. It's a little aggressive. Buddy. It's a little aggressive. Maybe cut him off. <laughs> He's drunk on tortillas. <laughs> he, he is the, he is the alpha off. goat. Oh, uh, well, are, they're drying up. They're, they're drying up. We could take them. They're really nice. They're like that bright, beautiful orange color. Oh, yeah, we have a, we have a Buddha head from our swamp, and we put a Buddha head there. <laughs> This is the burn field, we call it a trash volcano. <laughs> but that's an old timey little barn from 
the old property that used to be out here. But this is where we spend most of our time foraging. It's actually a few degrees cooler in the woods. Are you close with everyone who's around here, like beekeepers and the corn farmers? I, I don't know the beekeeper, to be honest with you. I've never met him, but uh -huh. we're close with Todd. So this was the original property, that big brick house over there. It's a pretty house. They plant wildflowers. A lot of shipping containers. And a lot of flowers. And there are a lot of mushrooms. Out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I grew up in Florida, so it was in the 80s, it was really, you know, not a good place to be. Our house got shot at drive-by shooting, and then my my dad got in a little bit of trouble, we'll just leave it at that, and we ended up moving to Central Florida, and I was in Central Florida until about two weeks until after I turned 18, and I joined the Navy and left Florida, mm -hmm. and never turned back. It was. It was getting very violent. People were on drugs. And, like my friends were like doing heroin and smoking crack. And I'm like, F this, I'm out. And I ended up in the Navy. And then once I was out of the Navy, I landed in North Carolina in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. And I was in the bar business there. I left, came here, was working in fine dining for you know about a decade. And then I just got a little burned out, and the farm started. That's where all our compost goes. We produce, a, you know, a couple of tons every few weeks. Yeah, but I was working fine dining at a farm to table restaurant, mm -hmm. and it was a, it was a good gig. You know, benefits, good pay, and I was just like kind of getting really, really the, the grind was wearing at me. And my partner at the time, Michelle, she just looked at me and she's like, "We're gonna, you're gonna quit your job and we're gonna start your your stupid mushroom farm." <laughs> I'm like, "All right, let's do it." So, with the help of a friend, a lifelong a long time friend Jeffrey and Michelle we basically took my idea and made it happen in a warehouse unfortunately my friend turned out not to be a friend and Michelle and I parted ways with him within like six months of the operation and then Michelle and I kept on with the farm we were building it from you know 100 pounds to like 150 pounds a week and then things started to go okay and then in December of 2016, Michelle fell ill and passed away. And then after Michelle died, it was just the Iron Show. And it was a, 17 was a pretty hard year. I lost my father that year as well. But I was still swinging at this thing, trying to make it stick, make it work. Like I knew I could grow mushrooms. I knew I could sell mushrooms. It's just making it a functioning business. And it took a long time to get to that point. Now we're actually okay, you know? We're, we're doing okay. We could grow a little bit more mushrooms, sell a little bit more mushrooms, and we'd be in a much better position. But right now, life isn't too bad. I'm actually in a better position than I was pre-COVID. Oh, really? Which is good, yeah. But it took a lot of work. And I have Grayson. Like, before, it was just me and a driver. Now I actually have someone to help me take some of the workload off my plate. And how did you meet Grayson? Grayson is a mushroom nerd, and he was reaching out to me for like months. He's like, hey, you need some help at the farm? Hey, you need some help? And then one day he just caught me at the right time and I'm like, yes, I need help. We just chatted and I realized that he's like a pretty cool dude and we jived well and you know, brought him on board and he's been around for about a year now. It's good to have someone here. If it was just me, I'd probably lose my mind. <laughs> you briefly mentioned that you're married, so your wife, she's not interested in helping you at the farm. or. Oh no, my wife has a real job. <laughs> so she has a real job so I could have my fake job. Actually, most of our couple friends have like real jobs and I'm the only one with like the stupid fake job. This is the awesome job. It is awesome. I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm saying that tongue in cheek, but yeah. it's like, it is a small business. Right, Everything right. that has to be done in this place is done by me or Grayson, but mostly me, especially like the, the back end stuff. This was supposed to be like the town hall of this neighborhood, oh. but with nothing going on right now, it's just they they had a build a piece that was already like in the pipeline, and that's the old Ennis farmhouse. That's the farmhouse that has been here since the early 1900s. Like I'm already like nerdy in my life, but <laughs> my hobbies are nerdy as well. Oh, what are some of your other hobbies besides? Mushroom. Gardening flowers. <laughs> I mean, I'm growing some tomatoes at home. Like, I, I plant flowers, I plant tomatoes, I, you know, bird watch, and I forage mushrooms. Like, how much 
I don't know. You're I can't such get a any wholesome person. Nerdier than that. <laughs> yeah. Have you always liked it? No. No? No, I used to be like, you know, I used to party and mm -hmm. back in the restaurant days, like, we get off work, we go to bars. Never was into sports or anything, but, you know, it was like active in the, the bar restaurant scene, and that's what we did. Or like, I'll go home and like play video games. I can't tell you last time I played a video game. I'm not oh, anti-video games, right. but when I would rather. When did that switch happen? That switch happened when I realized that I only have so much time in a week, or so much, so many hours in a day, and if I'm gonna allocate my time to something, I want it to be something productive or rewarding. Mm -hmm. Not saying video games are rewarding, because I'll still like play a game on my phone, like when I have nothing going on. But you know, I want to like read something or learn something or create something or grow something, because then I'm getting something back from. It. Right. Yeah. What would you say your greatest hardship or obstacle in, in building this company? I think the biggest challenge we've ever, the challenge that we continue to have is capital. The original capital that started the farm was not much. We put in about $30,000. Instead of growing into the business, we built everything out in the front end and didn't have the cash flow to keep it up. So we built out this grower room, we had this like really nice warehouse space, but we were growing like 100 pounds, not even a mushrooms a week, and that did not translate to a lot of money. And it was kind of behind the eight ball for so long, like it was a great idea, we were capable of doing it, but we just didn't have the sales. And it took a few years to get those sales up, and now we're actually at pre-pandemic levels. We are, every mushroom that we grow, we sell. What would you say the greatest parts or the best part of being a mushroom farmer? I mean, telling people you're a mushroom farmer is pretty yeah. cool. It definitely um, starts a lot of conversations <laughs> and it definitely makes certain conversations like turn a really weird way when you're talking to like normal people with normal jobs and someone's like, hey Shani, what does your husband do? And she's like, oh, he's a mushroom farmer and then it becomes this thing. Um, I don't like to be the center of attention, but I will nerd it about mushrooms all day long for anybody who wants to listen. Going back to the restaurant world, I love the, my people in the restaurant world. I just, I got burned out from the particular job of being a general manager. Working in, you know, as a farmer, I still get to see my chefs. I still get to see my restaurant people. It's just I'm coming through the back door instead of the front door. And it's still being part of that life. Being your own boss is a perk, as long as you're you're good. I mean, you have to be motivated. And I, I feel I'm motivated, I mean, I'm doing it. We're here, we're here every day, slinging them. <laughs> what is one memorable or funny um, incident that you would like to tell us? People always ask about magic mushrooms. Because they just assume, hey, you're a mushroom guy, so you must be like growing this special kind of mushrooms or everybody's like where are the special mushrooms and that used to like bother me because most people in my profession there aren't a ton of us but we want to separate ourselves from that because it's not what we're doing and we don't want people to think that we're like you know growing drugs even though i don't think it's drugs but that's another conversation anywho well at first i used to you know just say like oh no we don't do that but now i play with folks they're like oh where do you keep the special ones i'm like oh you gotta meet me in the parking lot for those or things like that I just joke with people i do troll people at the market as well that's kind of fun like i don't think we maybe they were actually waiting in the parking lot they might where come, is the mushroom guy they might come meet me in the parking lot <laughs> but the the whole like adventure hat thing like we wear adventure hats when we go foraging and a lot of people make fun of me for that <laughs> because they're like oh you're a mushroom farmer imagine that <laughs> i don't know i think it's pretty pretty funny i guess I'm, I'm not even like a normal dude to begin <laughs> with and then you add like the mushroom farming on top of it it's kind of funny well, should we shake hands <laughs> <laughs> make, it, make official. it official make it official i hope you like mushrooms and like what we do around here I mean, we're not like a real farm where we do something very particular and very specific, but it makes a lot of people happy. It makes me happy. Yeah. Yep, so this was Hiram. Yep. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye. <laughs>
<laughs> so mushroom brings you joy. Mushrooms bring me joy. <laughs> Growing them, picking them, foraging them, nerding it out with people, telling them about it. <laughs> <laughs>